In this video, we will learn about the second and higher order derivatives. We know that it is easy to calculate the first order derivative by using any given function, for example, y is equal to fx. We can find the first order derivative of it. So, in the same way, we can try to find out the second order derivative of any given function or even higher order derivatives in which we can go to the third, fourth, fifth or any other level of the derivatives. Um, so in, in brief, we can call them higher derivatives if we, if we want to. Now what are the different ways of uh, symbolizing these derivatives. For example, if we are dealing with second order derivative, we will write it like this, that is f double bar x. And uh, if we want to write it in the other way, we can write it like this, that is d2y and dx2. So, what if we want to write the derivatives of higher orders? For example, the third order derivative, fourth order derivative, and then the nth order derivative. You can clearly see that I, after writing the three bars, I have avoided writing the four bars because it would become very tedious uh, and space consuming if I write four bars here like this. And if I go for the fifth derivative or any other higher derivative, these bars will increase and they will not be suitable. So we use the digit 4 or 5 or n in order to show the um, level of the derivative that we are calculating. Another suitable way is the other way of writing the derivative in which you can see that after the, the digit appears and in this case after the independent variable x the digit appears that shows the current level of derivative. Here it is the nth order derivative. Now we have a numerical example. Uh, simply we are given a function that is y which is a function of x. It is in terms of x all the variables as you can see that they are in terms of x. So, uh, we can start taking the derivatives here. We are required to take the derivatives from first till fifth of the derivatives. So, the first order derivative will be the derivative of the given function y with respect to x, which can also be written like this. And you can say that the first term reduces to this and the second term reduces to that. And this term will reduce to this term. 3x will become 3 and minus 1 will become 0. So, this is the standard procedure of taking the derivative of any function where the sum rule or difference rule, let us write the rules that are used here, the difference rule as well as power rule all of these rules are used here and constant rule is also used due to which the answer of derivative uh, answer of uh, term minus 1 is 0. So, this is the standard procedure of finding the first derivative. Second order derivative will not be anything different from it because we will be taking the second order derivative using the same rules. Here again this term will be reduced to this term, 3x square with minus sign will reduce to this and 34x will become 34. So, we have the second order derivative which can be represented like this or in this way or separately writing like this. It shows that this is a derivative of the derivative of function y. So, it makes it the second order derivative. So, third order derivative will be the further derivative of the second order derivative. So, this term will reduce to this term and six, uh, this term that is 6x will become 6 and minus sign definite will remain there as the difference rule guides us. So, here it is the derivative of the second order derivative 
and this is one way of writing the third order derivative and this is the other way of writing the third order derivative now let's talk about the fourth order derivative again it's going to be uh, done in the same way as we have done before this is the third order derivative taking its derivative for another time we will get this answer this will reduce to zero so this is the answer that we have of the fourth order derivative which is the derivative of the third order derivative now the fifth order derivative will be again the derivative of the last derivative that is the fourth order derivative so we took the derivative of the fourth order derivative to get the fifth order derivative which is equal to zero because 96 was a constant and its differentiation reduces to zero so in this way we have calculated five derivatives and the answer is zero further taking derivative will again yield zero because the derivative of zero which is a constant will remain zero so in this way we can calculate the higher order derivatives of any given function now let's uh, talk about this uh, second order der derivative phenomenon in terms of a diagram these are two curves one of them is inverted u shape as you can see here and uh, this is u shaped so uh, these there are two panels of this diagram and we can consider them separately uh, what we can see here is that this is a curve and uh, once we have a curve its slope is variable if i take the slope of this curve at point a it will be a positive slope because at point a there is a tangent as you can see with the help of this cursor and this tangent is giving us the slope of 5 which is a high slope as compared to point B which is here and then there is point C and then there is point D and E so as we go ahead to point B the tangent of which is showing the value of 4 as the slope and C is giving us the slope uh, derivative uh, the s slope as 3 which is also the derivative because we know the slope of any um, function is the derivative in other words so um, the slope as you can see is reducing and at point D it becomes 1 and at point E it becomes 0 because if I place anything here it will not move because the surface is horizontal so you can see that in inverted u-shaped graph the slope is varying and we have a variable slope so this variable slope is basically uh, giving us multiple slopes and these multiple slopes are basically um, a sign of uh, uh, a change in the slope because initially the slope was positive and then it became zero here and here if I try to make a tangent it will be a negative slope so you can say that the slope is decreasing once if we are moving from this point to that point on x-axis so the rate of change of slope here is negative the slope is changing in such a way that it is leading to a decrease in it and it is becoming positive to zero and then it is reducing to a negative value here let us consider the same thing I hope you can understand these tangents at point A and point B and C and D and E initially the slope was high in terms of magnitude it was 5 but the sign was negative because the slope is 
negative or downward sloping tangent is there and then at point B the slope is minus 4 and point C has a slope of minus 3 and then it is reducing to minus 1 and finally the slope reduces to 0 because if I place anything here it is not going to move because it's a horizontal kind of point where there is no slope so here in this area the slope was negative then it became 0 and here it will be positive because if I take this point as a you know instance I will make a tangent here and this tangent is having a positively sloped shape and the slope is having a rate of change which is actually increasing because the value is uh, increasing from negative to 0 and finally to positive. This is the phenomenon that we can observe using the second order derivative because the second order derivative basically measures the rate of change of slope. So this is what you are seeing here the rate of change of slope is being observed from positive to negative and from negative to positive. Here you can see that we are mentioning the same thing that the rate of change of slope is the second derivative of the function and it is negative in this case because the slope moved from positive to 0 and then to negative. So um, slope of the given function has a rate of change and that is negative and in the other uh, example the slope was initially negative then it became 0 and then it became positive. So this means that the rate of change of slope of the given function is increasing that is the value is greater than 0. So in this way the second order derivative can be of help for us it can tell about the rate of change of the slope of the function which further can help us in finding out if we are at some maximum point or a minimum point as we will go ahead we will see that how we can make sense of it right now just to uh, give you a little bit of rehearsal uh, a question is there and you can solve this question you can find the first four derivatives of this function which is this and there is a stipulation here that x is not equal to minus 1 because if it is equal to minus 1 this term will reduce to 0 and the whole um, the whole function will be undefined which will not be at least economically meaningful therefore we avoid this possibility and assume that x is not equal to minus 1 so in this way second order derivatives and higher order derivative derivatives can be used to make sense of various functions thank you